Hi everyone and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for free with Ms. Estrick. In this video I'm going to be going through with you just how straightforward it is to use standard deviation in biology because often it's something that people fear even if they do study maths. So first thing I just want to clarify, in the biology A-level exam, you will not be asked to calculate standard deviation. It takes too long for it to be justified to be assessed in an exam. You might be asked to calculate it in lessons just to practice this skill, but never in the exam. You could only ever be asked, what is the purpose? So we can see here um, the definition. So standard deviation is a measure of how spread out all your repeats are from your mean. So you could be asked what standard deviation is and have to give that definition. You could be asked what is the advantage of using standard deviation instead of the range? So to answer that question, you have to know this definition for standard deviation, but also the definition of range, which is the highest and lowest value. So here are your three key reasons why standard deviation is more useful than range. Number one, standard deviation shows the spread of data around the mean, whereas the range only shows the highest and the lowest. Now, because the range only shows the highest and the lowest, it includes anomalies, and those anomalies have a big impact. Whereas standard deviation, because it's considering how spread out all the repeats are compared to the mean, the effects of anomalies are reduced. Lastly, standard deviation can be used to indicate whether a difference between the results is likely to be significant. And that's the key one we're going to focus on, because that is what comes up most of the time in the exams. So that concept there of significance or not is your answer to why knowing the standard deviation is really helpful for coming to a conclusion. And that's because if when you've either added or minus the standard deviation from your means, there is no overlap between the two groups or more than two groups that you're comparing. What that tells you is it's likely that the difference between them is significant. Now you can use this phrase significant in AQA for standard deviation, but it's just key to make sure it indicates it's likely to be significant. It's not a full statistic, so it doesn't tell you that you can be 95% confident that it's significant, but it's likely to be significant. So that's the language you'd use. However, if when you add or minus the standard deviation from the mean, there's no overlap, or sorry, there is an overlap, um, that indicates that there is likely not to be a significant difference. So an overlap means it's not significant. No overlap tells you it is a significant difference. So let's have a look at two of the most common ways this is assessed and it links to the critical analysis of data as well, which again is one of the um, key demanding skills, but I want to try and break it down for you so you can see strategies to approach this to make it less daunting. So a typical start point is they always tell you what the scientists are investigating. So scientists were investigating whether there was any difference in species richness, which is the mean number of species um, between three habitats. So we have the results in the table. We have habitat A had 11, habitat B had eight and C had one. But they've also included the standard deviation. So this is the spread of the data around the mean. So it could be plus 3.2 from the mean or minus 3.2 from the mean. So the question linked to it is, the scientists concluded that there was no difference in species richness or mean number of species in the habitat between those three habitats. Do you agree and use evidence? Now, whenever you're asked, do you agree with the conclusion? That is saying evaluate the conclusion. So you need to pick out evidence which does support the conclusion, but you also need to pick out evidence which does not support the conclusion. So they're not literally asking, give a yes or no answer. It normally means provide supporting evidence and evidence that contradicts as well. And the only evidence we have are the means. Now, yes, there's obviously a difference between those means, but if you're given standard deviation, your answer is definitely dependent on using standard deviation. And the way to use it is you need to plus and minus that standard deviation onto your mean to see, well, what is the highest and the lowest variation there was compared to the mean. 
So if you visualize this as a bar chart, the bar would be going up to 11, but you'd have a standard deviation error bar style on top, which went up to 14.2 and went down to 7.8. So we then need to do this for habitat B and C. So 8 plus 2.8 goes up to 10.2, and minus 2.8 we go down to 5.2. And then the same for 1, if we add on 1.3, we have 2.3, but it goes as low as minus 0.3. And from doing that, we can see there would be an overlap in the standard deviation bars on that bar chart if we take into account the higher end of group B and the lower end of group A because this one would go all the way up to 10.2 and this one goes all the way down to 7.8 so they would cross over and overlap. So what that tells us then is the standard deviations for A and B overlap so that's the way you phrase it there is an overlap. Then you have to say what that indicates. So that indicates there's likely to be no significant difference between species richness in habitat A and B. So that is our supporting evidence. However, the standard deviation for group C does not overlap with either habitat B or A. And that indicates it's likely to be a significant difference. And in this case, it's significantly lower. So that is our evidence which goes against the conclusion. And that's what they'd be after. They're not interested in whether you actually say yes or no. They want you to use the data to say the two sides of the argument. So this is actually the easier way to visualize it, where you are given the mean and the standard deviation shown on a graph, rather than being shown as a table and you having to calculate the top end and lower end and visualizing, is there an overlap? So this one's much clearer. So again, it always starts with what the scientists are investigating. And this time it's whether there was any difference in the mean glucose production between three plant species. And that would be within photosynthesis. They've also told you that the graph is showing the mean glucose production, and that's in grams per minute. And the bars indicate the standard deviation. Now this time it's not do you agree, it's what can you conclude from the results. So the first thing to look at then is do any of the standard deviation bars overlap? And we can see that for plant species B, there's no overlap with A and C, but A and C, there is an overlap. And I've done this dashed line to show the top of the standard deviation bar for C, we can quite clearly see it overlaps with A. And the same here, the bottom of the standard deviation of A is overlapping with C. So that would be the first thing that you would state in your answer. The standard deviations for plant species A and C do overlap. Then you go on to say what that means. So this indicates that it's likely there is no significant difference between the mean glucose production per minute for species A and C. However, the standard deviation for group B does not overlap with other species. So it doesn't overlap with A or C. And that indicates that it's likely to be significantly different. Um, now, the final thing I've added is just give a bit more detail and we can see it is significantly lower. So sometimes the AQA mark scheme does um, require you to point out, is it significantly higher? Is it significantly lower? And that's it. So you could either get, as we said, the type of question where you're comparing on a table, which is more challenging because it's harder to visualize or you could have it on a graph, but each time state all of the options where there is an overlap, all of the times where there is not, and then you're stating what that shows you. So I hope that clears up any confusion with standard deviation and boosts your confidence a bit. If you have found this helpful today, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to keep up to date with all the latest videos.